Welcome to Richard Bay Talk. You know why I'm looking like that? Well, I got out of the hospital two weeks ago. That's why there haven't been any podcasts. I had two hernia operations, which is enough to make you go, but actually what I'm doing is practicing my mugshot expression, the same one Donald Trump had. How's that? What do you think, Alfred? Albert, do I have to get the eyebrows? Uh, no, I think you're okay. I think you're okay. Nobody can do, nobody can do it like Donald can. Nobody. All right. But, uh, you know, I would think that if I was going to get a mugshot, he would, he would go like, this is ridiculous. Like you'd have, a, a, you know, you can't, you can't smile, but you could certainly look like, what the hell is this? You know, there was an article this past weekend in the Times that said uh, there was a Trump biographer um, who, who mentioned that Trump said to him, he thought that, um, that glare, scowl, and intensity... He got that from watching Clint Eastwood movies, and he thought that portrayed a power and an intensity and a macho figure. And he told Melania, this guy said, I think both he and Melania are doing a Clint Eastwood imitation. Anyway, the mugshot's out there, and Trump is making money off of it already. He's selling uh, mugs, actually, mugs of coffee, and... uh, He's selling T-shirts with this mugshot. So we're going to see it everywhere, unfortunately. Uh, But it's not only Trump. The Lincoln Project, which is an anti-Trump group of Republicans, they have their own cup. And I want to get that. Take a look at this. This is uh, on their site. It's uh, (laughs) inmate number P01135088. Oh, it was 808, and on the back it says Law and Order, Donald Trump. Uh, but if you want to get that, it's sold out already. So they have a waiting list, and I'm going to order one. But instead, I got this cup. Uh, can we see it, Albert? There we go. Cup of Joe with Joe Biden's picture on it. Hmm. Ah, yes, it gets the job done. Yeah. Um, The other big controversy with this booking this week was Trump's uh, uh, telling them that he weighed 215 pounds and that he's six foot three. (laughs) Come on. (laughs) Have you seen the pictures of this guy on the golf course with the belly hanging out and that? Listen, he's 215 pounds my ass. I thought we couldn't get this picture. No? Oh, we got it. Okay. Maybe his ass weighs 215 pounds. Uh, I would like somebody, maybe Bill Maher will do this, offer a million dollars to his uh, campaign if he will just step on a scale for one minute. He is, Albert, what do you think? What do you think is his height and his weight? Um... It's definitely not 215. I can tell you that. Well, let me tell you this. Let me borrow a line from Lloyd Benson that was used in a debate with Dan Quayle. Um, Donald Trump, I know 215 pounds. I am 215 pounds. And you're no 215 pounds. Actually, that's my weight. And I'm five foot ten. So don't tell me he's 215 pounds. But some millionaire, offer this. A million dollars, maybe Bill Maher will do it. Get on a scale for one minute. I don't even believe that he's six foot three. He's probably six foot one. I would say six foot one, 285, and maybe even more. That's what I would say. Now, Stormy Daniels even jumped on board this with a tweet, and she said, uh, okay, and I'm 110 pounds and a virgin, and I'm not a scale or a doctor, but I have spent some time beneath 215-pound men, and Tiny wasn't one of them. <laughs> All right, well, 
The other uh, big scandal this week, though, is one that I'm, I have some anxiety about approaching because I haven't found one person who agrees with me, including Albert, and we'll get into that in a, in a little while. But um, a kiss is just a kiss. You must remember this. On that you can rely. You know, everybody thinks that that song was written for Casablanca. It wasn't. It was written 10 years before Casablanca by a guy named Herman Hupfeld, who lived in Montclair, New Jersey, where I lived for a year or so. Uh, he lived with his mother all his life until the day that he died. And he wrote that song. Um, and it was picked up in Casablanca. You know, the producers almost cut it out of the movie. They, they didn't want it there. And yes, kissing is once again back in the news and appropriate and uh, unappropriate kissing. You remember Donald Trump at one point had said this. I gotta use some Tic Tacs just in case I start kissing her. You know, I'm automatically attracted to beautiful. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. You just kiss. I don't even wait. And when you're a star, they let you do it. Well, I think pretty much most of us agreed it's inappropriate to just walk up to people and give them a kiss, especially if it's beautiful women, you're attracted to them, and so they just grab them and you want to give them like a, 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 a sexual expression of, of your appreciation of their beauty and just do it to anybody. I mean, I think we all sort of agree that that was inappropriate. And then there was the Biden kiss. Do you remember Lucy Flores? She said... She was making a speech in New Mexico as she was running for office, and Joe Biden was there to help her uh, as vice president and support her and go out and endorse her. And she said that he came up behind her, and I don't doubt this, that he put his hands on her shoulder and he kissed her head. And that she felt that was intimidating and highly inappropriate and for a while, she was also a Bernie Sanders supporter who, who wanted Bernie Sanders to get the nomination and not Joe Biden. But uh, we've all sort of forgotten about that. But here is a clip of her. Vice President claim. Biden uh, and his team just released a statement just moments ago uh, from uh, Mr. Biden. Here's what it says, quote, in my many years on the campaign trail and in public life, I have offered countless handshakes, hugs, expressions of affection, support and comfort. And not once, never, did I believe I acted inappropriately. If it is suggested I did so, I will listen respectfully, but it was never my intention. We have arrived at an important time when women feel they can and should relate their experiences and men should pay attention, and I will, unquote. What's your response? Frankly, my point was never about his intentions, and they shouldn't be about his intentions. It should be about the women on the receiving end of that behavior. And this isn't the first time, and it wasn't the only incident where he was acting inappropriately with women. If he is saying that he never believed that that was inappropriate, then frankly, I think that's a little bit of a disconnect and, and um, not being aware mm -hmm. of very sense of of not being aware. I mean, just to clarify on what you, what you just said, you don't consider it to be sexual harassment, but rather, I mean, what would you call it? It is a, an invasion of my personal space. It is a, it is a clear um, violation of my bodily autonomy to not be touched unless I give you permission to touch it. Well, so is a hug. Albert, what do you think about that? Was this something that should rise to the level of scandal? I think, I think, you know, we live in a time where everybody should know this. You don't, you don't kiss anybody without permission. You don't touch anybody without permission. That's what I think. Do, do I think there are times where you, you, you are, um, not at right, but, but it's, it's per, 
it's okay. When? When it, is it okay? Well, what are the rules here? Well, can uh, I kiss? Uh, well, uh, for instance, no, 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 all I'm, my life, if I was at a friend's house and his mother cooked dinner for us and she was very attentive to our needs, at the end of the night before I went home, I would go up and I would give her a kiss on the yeah. cheek. Is yeah. that appropriate or not? I have a friend who's 91 years old. He's one of my best friends. His wife is 80. I, when I used to go to New York, they have a spare room, and I used to stay there. And whenever I left, I would thank him, and I would go to his wife, who's 80 years old, and I would give her a kiss. I'll tell you this. After this first began, I said, I asked her permission. I said, Listen, I instinctively would like would like to kiss you goodbye, but is that all right? Now, I, I happen to think that's that's kind of ridiculous. I think if so, if you're going to do it now, okay, if you're going to move in and the person doesn't move in with you, back off. That's that's really the the best thing to do. Well, even well, if it's even if if it's with friends and familiar people. Right. I think well, we've got I, to that point. Silly. I got a, but... I got a few more clips here because, of course, the incident that happened this week happened after uh, Spain won the Women's Soccer Cup, the World Cup. There are only two countries in the world that have won both the World Cup for men and the World Cup for women in soccer. Uh, Spain is now one of them. Germany is the other. Uh, but in the past, um, soccer players have kissed each other without asking permission. <laughs> there was also this kiss, which at one time would have been scandalous. But um, the, uh, the woman who was later kissed by the uh, president of the soccer federation, when it was over, she was overwhelmed and ran up and kissed the person that she loved, which was marvelous. Here's a picture of that. Do we have that picture? No. Yes. No, that's not it. Okay. I guess we're all messed up here. But she went up and kissed her girlfriend. Um, do we have um, do we have the soccer kiss for the podcast? All right, this is the actual kiss. All right. That's it. Can we see it again, please? Since we lost so many other pictures. All right. It's one second. And if you look at it, he does say something to her before he gives her a kiss. And she does give him two pats of sort of reassurance or encouragement on his sides. Um, when it was all over, someone asked her about it. on. Uh, she was on a live stream on Instagram. And she said, I didn't like it. But she was laughing when she said it. Then she went on a radio show called El Tiempo de Juego, the time of the game. And when she was on the radio show, they asked her about it. And she said, well, it was because of the emotion of the moment. There's nothing more there. And she said this, I'm absolutely sure it won't be blown up more. Boy, was she wrong about that this morning. Uh, before I did the podcast, I heard that Spanish prosecutors are looking into whether they should uh, bring criminal charges against um, Luis, I, I'm not so great with these names, Luis Ribieros, who is the president of the uh, uh, soccer foundation who kissed her. So initially, she sort of, you know, said, I didn't like it, but so what? It's not a big deal, blah, blah, blah. But then politics got involved. Two ministers said that this was an act of sexual violence. Uh, the, uh, Spain's government minister for equality said, this kiss is a form of sexual violence. Women suffer on a daily basis. I, I don't think that kiss had anything to do with sex. It was one second, uh, and it happened after a, 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 an event that nobody thought was possible. In a moment of extreme exuberance, so extreme that, yes, can we have pick five lifting him up? All right. 
well, if you can see there, um, that is the woman and that is the president. And she's so excited, she lifted him up in the air. I wonder if she asked permission first. And the other background to this. I don't know. I, I, I also see a different picture there. I see him grabbing her and uh, trying to, uh, you know. Humper? Humper, yeah. I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> I really don't think she's lifting him up as much as she went to give him a hug. And then he said, well, let me, let me get a little. Well, I will say this. Both that, ways. Well, the federation that he represents, they did in, which stands behind him. Now, FIFA has suspended him, but his own federation said they did a, a, an analysis of the photograph. And they say that she is lifting him up at that moment. So, yeah, so he's humping her. And you can see, because there's such danger there, uh, the woman on the other side, she's leaning with her her butt outwards so that she doesn't touch the other person. Uh, but then that's the queen of Spain over there giving a big hug to, the, to one of the soccer players. I mean... I wonder if she has permission. Can I hug you first? What about well, that? Hugging hugs? a kiss on the lips are two different things. Well, not that kiss on the lips. That was like, so what? How about kiss blowing a kiss? Okay. Is blowing a kiss all right? It's preferred, I think, now. That's yeah. what you do. Or you yeah. do the touching cheeks, phony kiss. Do yeah, that. Yeah, They've yeah. been doing that in France and Spain for uh, centuries, I think. This was a microsecond where somebody was overwhelmed with uh, uh, appreciation and excitement about something that had never happened before. You know? It wasn't about sex. Don't because... tell me you think that kiss was about sex. I don't that think it was. It was about... No, I don't think it was about sex. But it's this is a form of sexual violence that women suffer on a daily basis. That That's what the minister. That's going a bit too far. Do you think looking into criminal charges, prosecutors? A bit too far. All right, and firing him is a bit too far. Do you know what he said after this? This is what he said. I will not resign, I will not resign, I will not resign. I was completely wrong, I have to admit it. It was without bad intention, with a lot of excitement. In the moment, we both saw it as natural, uh, but outside a commotion is formed. I have to apologize and learn from this and understand that when you are president, you have to be more careful. It was a spontaneous kiss, mutual and euphoric. That's what he said. That's the it's proper a, thing to say. Absolutely. Right. And that, but it wasn't enough. No. We live in a You know what? You. If you want it to be a learning experience, there's your learning experience. If you want to show I am woman, hear me roar. And here's more of this. 15 of the women on the soccer team had gone on strike before the game, uh, in the weeks before the game, because they didn't like the coach. They thought he was too authoritarian. They didn't like the way he trained them. He, they didn't like the fact that he didn't, uh, that the coach did what he wanted to do and didn't take their suggestions. So 15 of these soccer players said, "We're not going to play." Um, but that as has long as this to man is this. what? That has nothing to do with this. He's not. Oh, it does. It does because the president supported the coach. The coach's name is Jorge Vilda. But, yes, um, and, but, but and that's what about ism that has that issue has nothing to do with this and to mix them together. Oh, oh no, wrong. it does. It I does. Know. Because I, this would not have become such a big deal among the players if if they didn't have this resentment already there. That's my opinion. You have yours. Yeah. But I have a feeling if everything was hunky dory between the coach and the president and the players, people would just dismiss this. They should dismiss it. He apologized. Well, all right. Well, he apologized appropriately. Well, I can't believe we agree. I haven't had one person agree with me on this. I am sort of, I was very sort of anxious even broaching this topic where people would say, how can you diminish what this poor girl has suffered in that one second with this brute of a man?
Okay. Yeah, I think the word suffer is is a bit much as well. <laughs> I have to say. Well, it's it's a, an extreme act of sex. I don't think it's sex had extreme. anything to do with this. It's it it's, was exuberance. It was a guy who was so he you know what he kissed a lot of other players too, but he kissed them on the neck. Is that all right? Nobody talks about that. Kissing no good. Kissing anywhere is no good. We know that now. Yes. If, if well, you're not giving permission. I, to listen, kiss, I know this. I know it's a political hot potato, but I don't know that it's something sexual. I, when I kissed that 80 year old woman who let me sleep in her house, uh, it wasn't a sexual thing. All right. Now, let me just move on a little bit because there are instances where aggressive acts of kissing, I think, deserve. Um, reprobation, or even criminal charges. And this is one of them. Perhaps you've heard about this. There is a councilwoman in New York, uh, Irina Vernikov, who represents a part of uh, Brighton Beach, and she is an immigrant um, and a Republican. And she was being interviewed on a street corner when something happened that I think was not only inappropriate, but I think you could be fair to say it was an assault in some way. Take a look at this. She said, what the fuck? <laughs> no, they bleeped it on that, but she did say what the fuck, and I've heard her say that. And she went to the police. The man has been identified. She put, picked him out of a line, a photo lineup, not an actual lineup. And he does have a record. And she's pressing charges. But guess what? It's a misdemeanor. What's going to happen to him? But that was entirely inappropriate. And yet, this city councilwoman, uh, Irina Vernikov, is a big Trump supporter. Here's a picture of the two of them together. Now, this is a guy that said... He can go up to any beautiful woman and just and just give her a kiss. He can't control himself. He just kisses them. It doesn't matter who they are. Of course, he went further than that. Um, in this particular motion, he is not, you know, actually assaulting her nether regions. But yeah, how could you support this guy and then talk about sexual violence and be concerned about it with women? All right, now this last clip is the one that I'm most reticent of all to show. Because it's about me. When I did People Are Talking in Philadelphia, we had a sixth anniversary show, and it was very exciting. All of the people who had been connected to the show for six years, I'd been there for four, uh, were on the broadcast. And the audience was filled with a, uh, audience members, some of whom were pretty much regulars. They would come every week or every couple of weeks, and I knew them, and I would talk to people after the show. And as I entered the studio on this day of celebration for People Are Talking, I did the unforgivable. Take a look at this. Now, the host of our show, Richard Bay. Hey, how you doing? So immediately after that, the police were called. I was put into handcuffs, and I was unceremoniously fired from the broadcast. <laughs> well, of course, those were the days when Richard Dawson was kissing. And I didn't start every show kissing people in the audience. This was a very special show. And a lot of these people, as I said, were regulars on the show. But that was, uh, well, well, that all began 40 years ago this month when I went to Philadelphia to audition for a live morning talk show to replace Maury Povich, 
On a show called People Are Talking, I had a friend, Nancy Glass, in New York, who used to be a news anchor on Channel 5, but also did the Evening Magazine in Philly, and she said, why don't you go down and audition for this show? And I said, but it's live television, live interview for an hour. I said, I, I've done magazine formats. You know, I, when you do a walk and talk, it's all on videotape. If something goes wrong, you do it over again. She said to me, well, you're an actor. Come on, you can't do live TV. I have to tell you, I had done one live TV appearance in my life at that point, and that was uh, with Dennis Cunningham, who was the entertainment reporter, and I was at Radio City Music Hall for their anniversary. And I had four lines, and I stood there with the camera, and the stage manager says, one minute to air, one minute, and I'm going on the air live. And I have to tell you, four frickin' lines. And my heart is like, boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. I don't even know what I said because it was live TV. But in Philly, you do something every day. It's like being an airline pilot. You're up in the air in a tin can with 300 people uh, whose lives are in your hand. It's a daily occurrence. And me turning to look in the camera and talk to a million people is, um, you know, with something I could roll out of bed and do it, you know, after a while. Well, anyway, when I went to Philly, the program director said to me, everybody wants this job, Bay. And if you can see there, I look like a kid. Um, you know, Maury Povich was a fully grown man who did the news. I was, I look like I just got out of high school. And uh, he said, Charlie Rose wants this job. And if I hire you, I'm taking a big chance, so you better appreciate it. And that first time that I was in Philly and I came back, I must have auditioned five or six times before he hired me. But I looked at Philadelphia and I went, how can I live here? It's so provincial, coming from New York, and it was so strange to me. And I have to tell you, after six months or so, I loved Philadelphia. I would have been happy to spend the rest of my life in Philadelphia. It was a, a big city, but like a small town. I used to call it Mayberry. Everybody knew everybody else. Hi, Opie. Hi, Ampy. I mean, uh, you know, on the weekends, we'd all go to uh, uh, David's famous deli and sit at a table and, with all of the other newscasters and on-air people and po political figures, people who were on the city council and people who were uh, rep state representatives. And we'd all sit at this table and talk about politics and what was going on in Philly. It was just wonderful. And I bought my first piece of real estate in Philadelphia, and I loved it. And when I finally got the job back in New York or Sea Caucus, I, I drove around Manhattan and I said, how could I ever live here? <laughs> the noise, it's dirty, it's so crowded, the pollution, the traffic. And then after a while, I grew to love Manhattan again, too. But Philly will also have a place a special place in my heart forever. Well, anyway, that was the anniversary show. And Maury Povich, who I had replaced, had left and was starting to do Current Affair uh, in New York, a nationally syndicated show. You'll probably remember him uh, hosting that show uh, wherever you are. It was on any of the... It was a Fox television show. So Maury show, Povich showed up for the sixth anniversary show, and I got to sit on the couch couch and have a conversation with him. Here I am with Maury Povich. Now, the host of our show, Richard Bay. Hey, how you doing? When I arrived here, there were some things that could be fairly intimidating. I'd never done a live talk show before. And of course, everybody in the building and in the community came up to me and said, you're going to have big shoes to fill. And those shoes belong to Maury Povich. They were big shoes to fill. He's a man who's loved and respected by everyone here in the Delaware Valley. Please help me right now by showing him how much. Oh, 
Thank you. Mary! Good to see you. Thank you. See that? Woo! See uh, what you can look forward to, Richard? That you got, you'll end what, up. What, do you think he's aged? Oh, uh, oh sure. Oh. You end up with these, I'm telling you. <laughs> we got a show to do, right? Okay, Pops. <laughs> right. Good to see you. Woo. Gosh, look at a lot of old friends. I saw some on the street before I was coming in. That's the great thing about the people who always come on this show. You always see them on the street first. <laughs> when you think back on people are talking, is there one show, when you say, when you think back in your experience here, that really just stands out or leaps out at you? There were a few of them. I mean, I think uh, we were the first show, I think, that uh, when the former Mayor Rizzo, last time around when he ran against uh, Wilson Good, he came on this show, I think, as his first television appearance because he had remained silent. We have a clip from that show. Is that right? That show won an Emmy, and here is Maury Povich oh, facing I'm off kind of proud with of that. former Mayor Frank Rizzo. <laughs> is that what three years I at home does I for little, you? I had time to reflect, and um, uh, I think that uh, I've, I've done some practicing, but uh, it's not really a new Frank Rizzo, just a lot wiser. I, can't, I won't let you bait me. You know, uh, as a newsman, <laughs> before I'd be all over you. Have I tried? Now I'm practicing. You're trying, I'm but I'm still walking the way on I'm smiling, shows, Mark. You know? <laughs> I'm just trying to feel you out. I mean, I, I said to you no. in the in the other room before the show. I said, you know, in, in 1975 and 1976 and seven, when Washington was very uh, calm and kind of boring with Mr. Ford and Mr. Carter. We used to take a look at you up in Philadelphia and say, well, I wish that guy was here in Washington. We could have some fun. <laughs> well, that's good. That's nice. <laughs> <All right. laughs> that's it. That was uh, the former mayor. And have things changed? He's I running. think later today he's going to make his announcement. Yeah, well, he's already been uh, picked as the Republican choice to oh, run well, against uh, Mayor Good. You also uh, <laughs> anchored the news here. I anchored the uh, early evening news. We had a lot of fun. You also had a co-anchor, co Joan Dinnerstein. Yeah, right? Joan Dinnerstein worked with me, yeah. And I, and I believe she's in this clip that we have. Really? From the news here, Eyewitness News at Channel 3. Coming up next, right here on Eyewitness News 530, we will have an exclusive interview with one of the survivors of those shootings at Smoke and Joe's. The space shuttle may be delayed on its third launch. We're going to have the latest on another recall of baby formula, and the recipient of a very rare operation goes home. Of all that, plus the sports, the weather, right here next on Channel 3's Eyewitness News. What do you think when you look at yourself up there? I'm a depressed. <laughs> <laughs> I get very depressed. Is there anything about Philadelphia you really miss? Well, I'll tell you what I, I miss more than, than anything. And it's been my experience. When I came to this city, it's like all in our lives. We have always been down. There have been moments in our life we've been down, where we've been bruised or wounded or our pride was hurt. And I came to Philadelphia from a situation in which I felt that I uh, had been bruised by uh, getting fired from a couple of stations on the West Coast. And my confidence was low. And I came to what was then considered, and maybe still so, uh, and, and you know this as well as I do, Richard, a very difficult town for outsiders. You had, if your name had not been known in Philadelphia or you had not worked in Philadelphia, I mean, they could take you down a peg or two very quickly. And the, the reception that I had, and the, the warmth and the openness that, that everybody in Philadelphia who I ever came into contact with, the instant just feeling, good feeling, just drove my confidence level back up to the point where I, I felt I had a lot of self-pride. And uh, I'll never forget that about Philadelphia. And it's the best part about this town, and always has been, is that everybody wears their feelings on their sleeve. But you know what else is true? No pretense. If you come in with an attitude, Philadelphians will just turn you right off. But if you come in, it's also true, you, you, you get what you give. And if you come here with an open heart and an open mind and an acceptance, which, which he did, then the Philadelphians yeah. will take you to their hearts as well. And, and you know, there, there, there's, there's the TV graveyard up here in yeah, Philadelphia. A lot of people are A lot of people from it. this station are up there. <laughs> right. Oh, yeah. When you were in town here, you were probably the premier bachelor of Philadelphia. Well, I don't know about that because I was dating my now wife at the time, but uh, she was <laughs> on the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> I had my nights. I had my moments in Philadelphia, and uh, that's another great thing about it. The women of Philadelphia. I forgot. <laughs> to all my women friends in Philadelphia. <laughs> who made my life enjoyable and bearable in the wintertime. Thank you so much. <laughs> Let's just leave it at that for right now. <laughs>
<laughs> okay. And uh, both Maury and I went on to do pretty radically different things from where we started. Of course, he had a show where every week it was I, a paternity test. Who's the baby's father? And I went off to do the Richard Bay show. Uh, sometimes uh, you choose the path and sometimes the path chooses you. Well, the path has uh, chosen me to the end of this podcast uh, or led me to the end of this podcast. And as always, to, I'll try to make a bet. Oh, next week I'm going to do a 9-11 show. So um, make sure you turn in for that because I, I, I think you're going to find it very interesting. Anyway, all my best to you. Take care. 